So I'd like to welcome you to the Health Information Management Services Coder Training Program Information Session. My name is Stephanie Brumberg. I am the Corporate Director for Health Information Management Services here at Christiana Care. I am going to kick off this session with you this afternoon and then turn the session over to my colleague, Christine Pelekis, who is a coordinator in our coding team. For those of you who may not be familiar with this, um, this is the Christiana Care Way. We review this at the start of every session here just to make sure that everyone understands why we're here um, and what we're doing, what we're trying to accomplish. Here at Christiana Care, we serve our neighbors as respectful, expert, caring partners in their health. We do this by creating innovative, effective, affordable systems of care that our neighbors value. And this really drives everything we do here at Christian and Care, including our coder training program. So I'm going to review with you the agenda for this afternoon's program. Um, I will be covering the background of the program, and then Christine will share with you the day in the life of a coder, what it really means to be a coder, what do you do day in and day out. Um, she will then review the program schedule and expectations of the staff that are hired into the program. And we will then review the application process for those who are interested in applying, as well as the eligibility criteria and key dates and milestones with our rollout. So at the end, should you have any um, questions, we will be here to take those questions for you, both Christine and I. Um, so we please ask that you do reserve your questions to the end because we do have a lot of information to provide throughout the slides and we may answer your question as we continue on with the program. So I just want to give you a little bit of background um, for the program. Um, with the implementation of ICD-10, which is our code set that started in October of 2015, um, the demand for coders has really risen, and it really takes a lot more time to code a medical record than it did in the past. So as a result, we've had to hire more coders, and the workforce um, and the availability of coders is really limited in the marketplace. So that really was the driver behind starting this program. This is actually our second um, time now doing this program. We had our first program start July, the end of July this past year, and it's scheduled to end in August. So we have 12 students currently in our program, all doing really well. I'm very proud of the selection process that we went through. I think that um, you'll see all of the steps that we go through to select the candidates for the program, and um, it's really to the credit of what we did that we now have 12 individuals who have been successful so far through the program. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the session over to Christine so she can talk, tell you a little bit about what a coder does and that day-to-day -day process. And then, as I said, I'll stay around to help with questions and answers at the end. This slide depicts what it's like for an average coder or a day in the life of a coder, and um, it gives us a pretty good picture of what their daily workflow is like. A coder gets his, his or her work assignment either through an email with a list of charts to code or retrieves a work list from an automated system, and that provides for him or her the work assignment for the day. It depends on whether or not the coder works in the inpatient or outpatient sector, and how ex expanded in their skill set is, and how, what is their level of experience. That also determines what their work assignment is. When they get the record, or essentially when they get the assignment, they go into the electronic record systems in PowerChart or Centricity or other systems, and they also look at imaged parts of the medical record, and that's anything that was in paper or maintained in paper while the patient was in treatment, and then it is scanned into an imaged medical record system. The coder reviews that record, and then looking at it carefully, will assign codes in an automated electronic encoder system. This is a software application that's used for coding. And as they go through looking through the record, 
identifying conditions. They use various reference tools that exist alongside either embedded in or within the encoder system or in other references. They'll use tools like the coding clinic, which is a set of questions and answers that pertain to diagnoses and procedures and how certain codes should or should not be applied in given situations. They also look at the various coding rules and guidelines, which are very strict and very important, and they are defined by CMS, which is the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the AHA, which is the American Hospital Association, and the AHIMA, the American Health Information Management Association. And as they review those rules and edits that apply to particular codes, they also are aware of various compliance rules and edits that would apply so that the correct codes are assigned for the given situation, for the condition, and for the proper setting. In, in other words, too, it has to do with um, how various areas in the country are determined to be able to code records. When they've completed coding the record and with that identifying all of the conditions or treatments that apply and putting them in the correct order, we refer to this as sequencing the codes, they enter them all into the encoder system and then submit it to the billing system where a bill is created and it's sent out to the various payers, the insurance companies, the, uh, the individual uh, responsible for payment, or however um, it's been determined that payment would be arriving to the organization. So what are a coder's responsibilities? They're pretty important. A coder will review and interpret provider information, and that can be any type of physician, um, a, a, a specialist, an intern, a resident, a nurse, a nurse practitioner, um, and they use various levels of documentation throughout the record, whether it's progress notes, flow sheets, specific therapist notes, and they use all of that information to determine the diagnoses and procedures that would be appropriate for this patient's particular episode of care within the hospital setting. They do this in a timely manner and it has to be accurate. So they are playing uh, against time because coders are under pressure to have codes assigned to these charts and sent to the billing system within four days after the patient has left the, the hospital or the outpatient setting. And they need to have accuracy because without accuracy, we are not reporting the conditions of our patients effectively for comparison purposes to other organizations or for rating effectiveness of how treatment is provided for all of our patients and also for accurate reimbursement because without correct reimbursement and appropriate reimbursement, the, the organization could not continue to provide care to patients. They also abstract key pieces of information that pertain to that that particular episode of care. It might be the age of the patient or the gender of the patient. It might also be related to their disposition. Where did they go when they left the hospital? Did they go home essentially well and able to care for themselves? Did they go to a nursing home or did the patient pass away? That is all very important in reporting what goes on in the time that the patient receives care at Christiana. And at the same time, the coder is remembering to follow all of the external, regulatory, and internal coding guidelines. And when we say um, external, we're talking about the regulatory agencies that I mentioned before, the alphabet soup, CMS, AHA, AHIMA, but also we look at the um, internal coding guidelines in the sense that what do we have the coder attach at a given time for each patient. Many codes might be hard-coded in the system, and we refer to it as hard-coded because at the time the patient receives care, it's automatically entered into the system for them. But sometimes the coder needs to collect other key pieces so that appropriate uh, reporting is available to various departments. They locate and clarify information, and they need to be able to look at diagnostic reports and essentially interpret them to some degree. They look at radiology reports, pathology, EKGs. They look at lab values, the orders that a physician writes for the patient, 
medication administration records and use this information to determine what was going on for this patient. Certain medications are used when a patient has certain diseases or conditions or symptoms and they might relate those. Certain lab values will tell us, gee, this is the kind of treatment they needed, did they receive it, did they get this medication. They identify pertinent data and they determine and sequence those codes for diagnoses and procedures as they enter it all into the computerized coding system. The sequence of those codes is extremely important because it actually sends that record into certain patient care groups or billing groups that are very important when it comes to reporting and comparing data on various healthcare organizations and for reimbursement purposes. Coders have several characteristics that are very important and I think kind of unique to them. They need to have the ability to work independently without daily action with other people. They need to be able to sit at a desk and work for long periods of time using a computer and also reviewing printed or actually written and then scanned patient records. It's very challenging. They need to have a clinical interest, but not necessarily be clinicians. They need to possess a firm knowledge of anatomy and physiology. They need to understand the disease processes. They need to understand the treatments that are applied in certain disease processes. They need to look and be able to recognize many, many details and process them and synthesize them and understand how they relate to each other. Coders need to be problem solvers. They need to be able to assess the parts of the situation and come up with various solutions. They need to have decision-making capability because they're often interpreting the record, interpreting the documentation that's there, and applying rules which are very often ambiguous and sometimes seem to be contradictory. They need to have strong written and verbal communication skills. Oftentimes, a coder will need to be able to ask a question either in person of another, of one of the coding management team or of a physician or of a clinician. They might also need to be able to send an email or put together a written expression of a query asking a physician or a provider to give them a little bit more detail or clarification on what went on with a particular patient. They need to have resourcefulness. They need to be able to look at these situations, analyze them, and make decisions. A coder needs to have very good memory skills and be able to couple that with an ability to reason and solve problems using various parts of information. They usually like to do thinking activities. Coders generally like puzzles. They like doing research. They're lifelong learners. They like to look things up and figure out how it relates to something else. They like solving mysteries. They need to be able to work under high pressure situations and adapt well to shifting priorities and frequent deadlines. I talked about the four day turnaround time. We are responsible in the coding area in the department to code and send to billing all patient cases within four days of when they leave the hospital, whether it's the inpatient or the outpatient setting. And that means sometimes that depending on the bulk of the numbers of accounts that have to be coded, you might be used to doing one type of, of account. For instance, there are coders who are very expert in emergency department and accounts. But today we have a full load of outpatient surgeries and somebody called out sick, so you may have to shift on a dime and code those instead or be assigned those accounts. And at the same time, those deadlines for what we call the DNFB, we refer to it as the DNFB, it is the Discharged Not Final Build Report that comes out daily listing accounts that are sitting and waiting to be coded or final build. And while initial coding might have been um, done on that particular account, if we are waiting for additional information, additional reports, missing sets of papers from in the record, a missing operative report, it holds up the ability to turn that timing around as quickly as it should be. 
This is what the career path looks like for someone who might start out in the HIMSS department coding. In this particular program, an individual starts out as a coding associate, and this is essentially a full-time student learner, studying, learning all of the coursework that I'll describe, and then after finishing that program and successfully passing the tests and the assessments and graduating, would then move up to be a coder in the HIMSS department. They will start out with basic and easier, and I put that word in quotes, accounts, and then move into more and more challenging types of work. As they become expert, as they become proficient, as their accuracy meets all of the standards of a 95% accuracy rate on their volume of work, as their productivity meets and exceeds standards, there are definite numbers that need to be achieved depending on the type of record. Then they move on and they move up into a senior coder role. Someone who is be has become extremely knowledgeable, proficient in coding, and is ready to mentor or assist with other um, teaching activities in a department or review records using the time as a, um, an auditor or allowing this person to review records for certain um, facts and diagnoses that we look at additional information for those particular types of accounts could then move into a coding coordinator role. As they become more and more expert, if they're interested in, develop, in supervising groups of coders, they would move up to a coding supervisor role and then on to a coding manager as they're ready to take on more responsibility and be able to teach mentor and manage the volume of work that comes through the coding department. Our associate director of the coding area, Kim Siri, is responsible for all of the coding responsibilities of the department, essentially the staffing, hiring, review work, um, billing, timeliness, productivity, personnel uh, concerns and issues, and also relating all of the information and training that comes from externally to the department or within the department, new developments in coding, changes to coding rules, new codes that are added to the system or revised within the system, and she is essentially responsible for making sure that all of the coders are prepared for whatever is new, different, or a revision to what they learned before. The coding program, the coding associate training program, includes online lessons that need to be completed independently, classroom quizzes and sessions, and there would be an instructor present on site to work with the students um, several days a week, but who is available 20 hours per week, either in person and on site or through webinar sessions and training sessions. They also use the time of the regular workday to finish quizzes, to do reading assignments, to take various tests and work on special projects. Success in the course is determined or is used actually for the individual's performance evaluation and measurement because this is now the individual's job, being a full-time student and learning everything they need to do to be coders. All of the necessary books are provided to each coding associate. There would be textbooks for anatomy and physiology, pathophysiology, and medical terminology. There are coding books for ICD-10 and CPT. There would be coding workbooks that would be utilized in, in tandem with the online program and any other review books or study books or workbooks that are considered necessary or applic applicable to assure the coding associate's success. The online modules start out with HIMSS or Health Information Management Services general concepts. This talks about an introduction to what's in a record, what are the parts of the record, what are the documents, how are records maintained, who writes in a record, an introduction to computer systems as they are used in healthcare. Then there is in-depth coursework in anatomy and physiology. Pathophysiology, the study of diseases, is also very important because after learning all of the body parts and the systems and how they work, it's important to understand what conditions can affect the patient and cause them to end up in the hospital or in healthcare. 
medical terminology, which is the language of medicine. This is the specific words and expressions that relate to the parts of the body, how it works, and the various conditions that it can affect the body. Basic pharmacology. It's very important to have a basic understanding of the drugs that are used or medications that are used in order to connect um, certain symptoms or diseases and the medications that are applied in those circumstances. Sometimes it's important to know that a patient received this medication so it actually allows a coder to relate backwards to what was wrong with the patient and why that medication might have been administered. You also learn about the Uniform Hospital Discharge Data Set, the UHDDS, which is a set of facts that are collected on every patient who actually comes through a healthcare system, whether it's inpatient or outpatient. Claims processing, which is the whole process of submitting codes to a billing system, sending bills to the various payers, and receiving payment. Prospective payment systems, these are classifications or groups that relate to patients as they fall into certain categories, whether it's relating to age or gender or certain sets of diseases and conditions, whether it's in an inpatient, an outpatient, a rehabilitation uh, setting or system of delivery of care. And there are compliance and coding edits. These are the rules that indicate to a coder that they need to code this code. If they do, they need to include that code too. Or if they do code that code, then maybe they shouldn't be coding the other two that they thought were applicable for the patient. So all of those rules are very important. And compliance indicates that we don't code incorrectly, that we follow the rules, that we follow the edits, and we only put the codes on the account that are relevant to that particular encounter. After the basics, the coding associates go into all of the study of the rules that do apply to coding and how to look them up a code, how to find it, what it means, how is it constructed, both in ICD-10, which is the International Classification of Diseases, 10th edition, and we also relate to ICD-10, CM, and PCS, which is a clinical modification listing all of the procedure codes that might be used at any given time. CPT and HCPCS, this is primarily an outpatient coding system or it is used extremely uh, frequently or essentially all the time in physician practices or in provider care. There is also a coding practicum. This is a time when the coding associates get to use a set of archived and imaged medical records and they're able to code them in a simulated coding environment. So it allows the coding associates a chance to see a real record, see what it really looks like, review the real record, and then go into a pretend or working coding system where they can practice assigning codes and seeing what happens. And then there is an internship in the medical records department where the coding associates would receive real live medical records for patients treated at Christiana Care and be able to practice coding them and receive feedback on each of those accounts and direction on how to either keep going as they're doing or receive um, instruction on how to improve their skill set. The current group of students gave us this feedback and I think this is really very important to know and I will read these slides. The course is very challenging. They're telling you, be prepared for a lot of studying. You are in isolation, no contact with others outside of the program. It's a small classroom. You have to pace yourself to stay on track with the course schedule. We have a very supportive management team. Good computer skills are helpful. Know that there is a lot of background learning. You can't just open a coding book and start coding. The first half of the program is dedicated to the background courses needed before you start any learning about how to code. You have to really love the medical field. Be prepared to work and learn on your own. You may find that you need to do some work outside of the program. It is like going to college. It's hard if you haven't been in school in a long time. There are a total of 
12 coding associate positions. This is a full-time position for 13 months. The coding associates are required to attend class every day. They need to also be in compliance with all of the rules pertaining to uh, CCHS policies for attendance, dress code, job performance, and core behaviors. The pay rate for the coding associate position is $18 per hour. It doesn't matter what you are earning now, that is the rate for this position. Where is it held? At the Christiana Executive Campus on Continental Drive, there is a classroom in one of the buildings there that is dedicated to this learning activity and this learning um, program. The first day of class is scheduled for October 10th of 2016. After someone successfully completes the program and graduates and is ready to move into a coder position, there is a three-year commitment after the program's completed to work as a coder in the HIMSS department. For someone who leaves early, whether they withdraw or they resign within that three-year period, the penalty is $7,500. The course schedule adheres to pretty much a full-time day job and a coding a program just like going to school full-time. It runs on Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. The coding associates in the program have a list of holidays and this is, follows a school schedule to some extent. They're off for Thanksgiving, November 24th and 25th. They're off for a Christmas break that runs from December 26th through the 30th. They're off for a spring break, which runs from April 14th through the 21st. Memorial Day, which is May 29th. The Independence Holiday, July 3rd through the 5th. And Labor Day Holiday, September 1st through the 4th. This notice here, associates must have the ability to accrue enough PTO to cover scheduled days off. We realize that some people might not have the full amount of holiday time accrued in their bank at the very beginning of the program, but they would need to have those PTO hours um, accruing in their bank so that they would have it for those holidays. During the program, you, you continue to accrue PTO at your current rate but you would not be able to, to take time off. Ordinarily, uh, people are used to asking for a vacation at times that work out that are convenient, but in order to stay on program, it's important that everyone has the same time off. Planned PTO outside of the scheduled days cannot be requested or scheduled by coding associates. There's a, there are reasons for this. The program is very intense and time and time uh, specific. Candidates wouldn't be able to finish the work or be able to take the tests or finish the assessments that go with each chapter or section of learning with excessive absences from work. And sometimes we realize that people would need some flexible time or the ability to flex some time for situations that might come up. We realize everyone at some time or other might have to have a doctor appointment or a dentist appointment or need to take a child for an important appointment. But that is not the same as requesting a day off and it can't really be scheduled without um, taking the time to discuss it with the instructor and it needs to be fitted in and scheduled around what the learning program is for that given time. So um, it would not be effective for someone to miss the actual learning days when the instructor is on site. And it can also be counterproductive to the individual to be able to get all of their work done and get their assignments completed in order to pass through the modules. Successful completion of the program includes the following elements. A passing score of 80% on better of, on each coding assessment or test as they go through the program. And they would need to achieve a passing score of 75% or better on the AHIMA Certified Coding Associate Examination. This is a test that is administered by AHIMA that indicates the level of readiness of a new coder coming in to work in a coding department. 
and, ex and it actually indicates their level of knowledge and understanding of coding and coding guidelines and principles with enough readiness to start working as coders. For anyone who has difficulty either keeping up with the work, passing the tests or the assignments, or who ends up missing a number of days, the positive discipline program would have to be initiated with that person because it is important that everyone stay on track regarding attendance, completing the work, and getting it done accurately and correctly. Coding associates who com successfully complete this program are then promoted to a coder, and the coder position is in the HIMS department, and their salary at that point would be bumped to 1966 per hour. The Certified Coding Associate Credential is, an, is offered through the American Health Information Management Association. It distinguishes coders who exhibit commitment to the profession and who also demonstrate all of the coding competencies across all settings. And that refers to inpatient and outpatient coding, and it includes both hospitals and physician practices. Becoming a CCA positions anyone who is new to the field in, uh, in as a leader within the market and ready to take on a coder position. And this is an exciting, dynamic, and growing profession. Christiana Care would pay for the coding associate to take that examination, and there is a fee uh, to AHIMA for $199. What would be required for anyone who wants to apply for this program? Well, you have to be a high school graduate or the equivalent and have some understanding and knowledge of biology and chemistry. Through the course of the, pro the interview process, you would have to demonstrate skills in reading comprehension, analytics, and communication, both written and verbal. You would need to successfully complete interviews with both human resources and members of the HIMSS coding management team. Anyone applying for the program who is then selected for an interview would need to supply at least two to three professional recommendation letters. Anyone to be successful in this program needs to have an understanding of basic computer applications. This would be personal computer applications, Word, Outlook, using the internet. It would be helpful to have experience having done research on a topic or a program of interest or an item of, that you had a particular interest in learning more about using the internet, using libraries, or using media centers. The coding associates jobs will be posted online in the CCHS job opportunities and HR, HR online. Anyone interested is encouraged to apply through the online system. During the application process, you would need to submit a cover letter explaining in detail why you're interested in this program, a current and up-to-date resume, and be prepared to submit two to three recommendation letters. The candidates who are selected for interviews would, be met, uh, would meet with the coding management team several months prior to the start of the program. There's a preliminary screening with human resources, and then there are entrance assessment tests that are scheduled for each of the candidates, followed by an in-person interview with someone from the HIMSS coding management team. Offers to individuals who successfully complete this process would then be offered with enough time for the person to provide proper notice to their supervisors or managers. This is our contact information, so if you had any question about the program content, what the course of study is like, please feel free to reach out to me. If you have other questions about the program, you could reach out to Stephanie Brum Brumberg or to Kelly Deganish, who is our employee relations representative.